yes, I can introduce myself. Uh, I am like you said that I am a researcher, conservationist from Slovakia. Uh, I work for many NGOs here in Slovakia for raptor protection of Slovakia for Rival Institute now. Rival Institute, maybe Ingrid can introduce <laughs> this NGO. And uh, so I have, I think that I have enough experience with research and conservation of birds, pets, and some other mammals. And what I can say about me. Mm. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, feel free to, um, For me. Share, share your screen with your presentation. Ah, yes, okay. So, but, yes. Uh, uh, speaking about me is a little bit weird <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will share the screen. So, the Vlado has just told us that he has already with many or with some of the NGOs that he has worked with in many different fields in different fields and that he and that the project Eulenspiegel is now with the Rewild Institute together with which Ingrid is also here today. So, uh, can you see the slide? I can see your slide, but it's not the first slide, yes. Yes, this is the first slide. Okay. Okay, so yes, this is the name of the presentation. This is the first part. Uh, in the first part, I will tell you about the bioacoustic uh, technique uh, in, in general. And then in the second part, I will, uh, I, I will tell you about the Ollenspiegel project uh, from the research perspective, okay? Genau, also zuerst geht es um die Bioakustik in der Natur, ähm, Naturschutzforschung und dann geht es um unser neues Projekt Eulenspiegel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yes, first slide is, I think, yes, it's the second slide is about me, so yes, I introduced myself, so I can go to other slide, maybe. Sure. So, Bioacoustics. Maybe, maybe you know what is the bioacoustics. Uh, I think that general, general is about the research of animal sounds uh, in, in the nature. Uh, bio, bioacoustics cover, covers uh, so this uh, some few points on this on the slide is identification of species by, by the emitting sound, monitoring of rare species. Uh, monitoring of distribution of different species uh, in the nature or in some area. And you can also research uh, differences between some two groups or subpopulations and so many more. So you can translate. <laughs> Ähm, also bei, dem, bei der Bioakustik, es kann ja sein, dass es äh, manche von euch schon kennen, geht es ja vor allem um die Forschung von Tierlauten. Ähm, und damit kann man auch ähm, Arten identifizieren, eben durch den emittierten Schall, ähm, wie man auf den Fotos auch sehen kann. Ähm, es geht auch um die Überwachung seltener Tierarten. Man kann die Artenzusammensetzung ähm, studieren. Man kann ähm, je nachdem des Tages oder der Jahreszeit die akustische Aktivität studieren und auch Unterschiede zwischen verschiedenen Gruppen und Populationen ähm, herausfinden, aber auch zum Beispiel den Zu- und Abgang von Tieren in einem Gebiet, also den Unterschied in den Populationen. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, I, when I, in general, Bioacoustics, when you have some uh, smartphone or some uh, audio recorder, uh, you can record some, uh, some sounds in, in the nature and then you can do the bioacoustics. <laughs> also alle, die einen, einen Recorder oder ein Smartphone haben, können eigentlich Bioakustik machen, weil man dann damit einfach die Tiere aufnehmen kann und das danach eben analysieren kann. Yes. Uh, so, yes, there are two approaches uh, in, in the research. Uh, it's a manual recording, so when you have some smartphone or some audio recorder in, in, in the hand, you can record the sounds and then you can analyze uh, these sounds and 
so this is the manual recording. But I, I think uh, what is uh, for me what is the most important is the automatic recording in the nature. So you have some recorder uh, which you can install on some tree or on some sites, and the re recorder will uh, record maybe for the whole night. Uh, sounds uh, in the nation so this is the automatic recording so you can put some recorder or hit the side and it will record the sounds yeah, in the nation mm -hmm. also es gibt zwei verschiedene ansätze bei der bioakustik einerseits gibt es die manuelle aufnahme ähm, wo man wirklich nur punktuell zu einem zeitpunkt ähm, einzelne vögel aufnimmt oder andere tierarten und dann gibt es die automatische Aufnahme, wo man einen Rekorder, wie man da auf dem Foto sieht. Und ich habe auch einen da. <lacht> das schaut so aus. So I have yes. one here, one of these two recorders. <lacht> And Vlado as well. Um, hier mit dem, die sucht man sich, wie man auf dem Foto sieht, zum Beispiel einen Baum aus, wo man den installiert. Und dann wirklich dauerhaft über die Nacht um, oder über mehrere Nächte die Geräusche aufzeichnet. Yes. So, so what we need, so how I said that <laughs> it's the audio recorder, you can see on the picture. So there is, I think now there are commercial audio recorders, like from some big company, like uh, from Olympus. And then uh, like this one, like this audio mod, or also uh, other companies uh, produce uh, these audio recorders for the ecological research. Uh, but this tiny audio recorder is, I think it's very good. And that after the presentation, we can also discuss about uh, this small tool. Uh, and also we need uh, some software for analysis of the recordings. So uh, I will also speak about Software later. Okay. So, um, was wir für die Bioakustik brauchen, sind einerseits die Rekorder, die Audio-Rekorder, wie ihr vorher schon gesehen habt, einen sehr, sehr großen Speicherplatz, weil solche Dateien wirklich um, viel Platz einnehmen können. Und dann, wenn man sie aufgenommen hat, muss man sie natürlich auch analysieren. Das heißt, danach braucht man auch eine Software, um das zu machen. Und der Blado wird uns jetzt im weiteren Verlauf um, auch mehr über beide dieser Dinge um, erzählen. Yes and, <laughs> yes, and also one other information, so you need some big storage space for many recordings, <laughs> like some external hard disk. And also you need, if you are not the very good ornithologist, uh, you need some key for identification of the animal songs, especially for bird songs and pet songs. So you can use some public uh, databases like the Xenocanto website. Mm -hmm. Also, wie er schon gesagt hat, wir brauchen einen großen Speicher, aber auch eine Datenbank um, für die Laute, also damit man diese dann auch identifizieren kann, damit man diese verschiedenen Arten uh, zuordnen kann. That's it. So, uh, I think that uh, in history, um, also ornithologists uh, re recorded some uh, bird songs and they they also pro produce many research based on these uh, recordings but why now the bioacoustics uh, uh, is uh, is on the uh, is on the top <laughs> so i think that it's because uh, the digital audio recorders so you need so you don't need some tape Uh, to uh, to the recorders you need only some SD card and now these recorders are very small so yes you have the audio mode you so it, this this tool is small like like a like a mesh box so <laughs> <laughs> and this small tool uh, has a good quality microphone so it's it is very important for Uh, for bird recordings. So, 
Okay, also die Frage stellt sich jetzt, warum ähm, diese Art von Methode ähm, sehr beliebt ist heutzutage und sehr ähm, weitläufig ähm, eingesetzt wird. Also einerseits, weil es natürlich ähm, digital ist. Das hat sich in den letzten Jahren sehr, sehr weiterentwickelt, die Technologie. Ähm, es ist eine automatische Langzeitaufnahme möglich. Also man muss nicht vor Ort sein, um das zu machen, sondern man kann sich wirklich darauf verlassen, dass dieses kleine Ding, das man alleine macht, also das ist hat so das Größe von einer ähm, Sünderschachtel zum Beispiel. Also das ist auch sehr handlich. Es kann leicht überall hin mitgenommen werden. Es zeichnet mit sehr hoher Qualität auf. Und es ist auch programmierbar. Also das ähm, sind so die einzelnen Vorteile dieser Methode. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Some only few words to the software. Uh, many of us of, uh, researchers Uh, don't use some commercial software, so they, we, uh, we don't use uh, software uh, for, uh, for the money. <laughs> so a very good way is some open source software, and this is, uh, I think, this is the Audacity. Uh, maybe, maybe you know Audacity because when you are working with some uh, music, uh, sometimes you uh, change uh, or edit the music recordings so then you use this audio out uh, this audacity and audacity is very good for preparing uh, recordings and also for uh, for the basic analysis and i will show you how to work with audacity uh, uh, at the end of this presentation okay also ähm, dann eben, um die Aufnahmen zu analysieren und zu bearbeiten, gibt es ähm, schon Open Source Softwares, also Softwares, die gratis sind, ähm, was natürlich immer zu sehr, sehr zu begrüßen ist und die auch wirklich gut funktionieren. Das ist die gleiche Software, wie man auch für die Arbeit mit Musik zum Beispiel verwendet. Ähm, und es können auch wirklich große ähm, Dateien damit bearbeitet werden und die Manipulation der Aufnahme ist einfach und sehr handlich und geht schnell. And now I will go to to two two parts because I have experience, especially with bird and bed research. So I will I will speak about this <laughs> about these two things, and because because you can also study not only the birds and bats, you can study also insects uh, or amphibians and it's also this, uh, the environment, so especially the noise in the environment. Okay, also der Vlado wird mehr über die Forschung mit Vögeln und Fledermäusen sprechen, weil er da eben sehr viel Erfahrung damit hat. Aber das ist nicht die ein, sind nicht die einzigen ähm, Tierarten, mit welchen man diese Methode verwenden kann. Man kann sie auch mit ähm, Insekten verwenden oder mit Amphibien ähm, oder einfach auch, um generell eine Umwelt mit vielen Geräuschen äh, zu erforschen. So, we can go to the, to the bird recording. So, what you can study. <lacht> So you can study the species composition on the side, uh, identification of individuals, uh, identific also when you have a stereo recorders with, so with two microphones, you can study uh, the bird positions uh, within the area. So you can study the distribution uh, of territories uh, in some selected area. And uh, maybe you know also the research about the, I, I know only the Latin name of, of this bird, it's uh, Emberiza citrinella, uh, and uh, many researchers around the Europe uh, studied uh, the differences uh, in, in, uh, in the singing, uh, in the singing males. Okay. Also es gibt verschiedene Dinge, die man eben bei den Vögeln ähm, erforschen kann. Und zwar ähm, ist es einerseits die Artenzusammensetzung ähm, an, vor Ort durch die Lieder, eben durch die verschiedenen Vögellieder. Ähm, man kann einzelne Vögel ähm, identifizieren. 
Man kann auch identifizieren, wo sich die Vögel befinden. Ähm, und man kann auch die Unterschiede zwischen ähm, zwei Populationen untersuchen. Und die Ingrid hat gerade in den Chat geschrieben, dass der Vogel, zu dem sich, der, ähm, was der Flado gesagt hat, auf Latein eben der Zitronengilitz oder ähm, die Goldammer ist und dass man eben zum Beispiel diese auch sehr gut mit dieser Methode schon untersucht hat. Yes, thank you, Ingrid. <laughs> Now we have the German name, uh, the English name, we still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and yes, there is also the berry search, uh, typically using uh, of these uh, uh, bioacoustics, uh, is in the species composition on the side. Uh, also, you can use. Uh, bioacoustics in habitat use by beds and activity over the night uh, but it, it it is a little bit different uh, in comparison to the to the bird research because in bird research uh, you studied the territorial calls but in the bed research you studied the uh, hunting calls <laughs> Okay, also bei, den, äh, bei der Fledermaus-Forschung ähm, ähm, kann man auch wiederum die Artenzusammensetzung erforschen ähm, und andererseits auch ähm, die Lebensraum Lebensraumnutzung der Fledermäuse. Ähm, was ein Unterschied ist zu der Vogelforschung, ist, dass einerseits natürlich in der Nacht geforscht wird und nicht am Tag und ähm, nicht ähm, die tagtäglichen Rufe der Vögel oder die ähm, auch die sozusagen Mating Calls untersucht werden, sondern eher die ähm, Fütterungs- und ähm, Jagdrufe der Fleger Fledermäuse. Und man kann auch ähm, die Kolonien, die verschiedenen Kolonien natürlich überwachen mit, mit der Bioakustikmethode hier. So, um, I will go to the bird monitoring so uh, uh, how to how to choose the method uh, uh, how to study uh, birds uh, with bioacoustics so uh, it it depends uh, on what is the goal uh, <laughs> of of the research so i will show you later but the, the most important how to prepare the monitoring method is uh, about the, what is the goal of the research. And then you must prepare recorders and then install the recorders uh, or at the area. And then after the recording period, you must, proce you must process these recordings. Also ähm, eben, wenn man eine solche Forschung durchführen will, muss man zuerst einmal ähm, wissen, genau was ist das Ziel meiner Forschung. Ähm, wenn man das einmal ähm, festgesetzt hat, muss man die Rekorder vorbereiten. Ähm, man braucht dafür ähm, auch wasserdichte ähm, Hüllen natürlich und wie man auf dem Foto sehen kann, werden die teilweise auch sehr gut getarnt. Ähm, dann werden diese Rekorder eben vor Ort installiert. Und dann im Endeffekt danach werden die ähm, Aufnahmen, ähm, naja, ausgewertet. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you see the uh, mouse point at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So on, on this picture there is a installed a recorder <laughs> with, with some camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> ja, genau. <laughs> So, ja, mit, eben, dass man die, die Rekorder dann nicht so gut entdecken kann. In einem mittleren ähm, Foto kann man das sehen, wie sie yes. sich entdecken. I, I think that I, I don't know if it is a problem uh, only in Slovakia, but uh, the my problem is uh, that some of these recorders installed in the nature can be take out from some other people. <laughs> so. Uh, so the problem is not actually that the birds or um, bats see the recorder, but yeah. uh, that other people see them. Yes, because people are a problem, especially in some uh, touristic areas. <laughs> yeah. Also das Problem sind gar nicht, dass die Fledermäuse oder Vögel die Rekorder sehen würden, sondern dass wirklich die Leute sie sehen und vor allem in touristischen Regionen diese dann ähm, auch gerne mitnehmen. Yeah. <laughs> um, das muss man natürlich vermeiden. 
Okay. Maybe in Germany it's a better situation. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yes, there is a slide with many words. <laughs> so, I think that, um, the method um, depends especially on the, on the bird detectability. So, it means uh, how the sounds is spreading uh, over the environment. So, uh, it, it depends on the, on the size of the bird, uh, of the also on the frequency of the sounds and overall uh, on the environment because in forest uh, the, the the bird calls uh, will will spread uh, much less uh, than in some open space mm -hmm. Also ähm, ob ähm, und wie man die Methode einsetzen kann und wie man damit die Vögel ähm, untersuchen kann, hängt sehr davon ab, wie nachweisbar dieses sind. Das hat einerseits ähm, mit ähm, der Frequenz der, dessen, deren Lieder ähm, zu tun, aber auch mit deren ähm, Größe, aber natürlich auch mit, ähm, der, mit der Umwelt, wo sich die Vögel befinden. Also ob sie im Wald sind oder in einer offenen Fläche, weil natürlich im Wald der Schall und ihre Lieder und die Frequenz viel weniger weit ähm, sich ausbreiten können als in einer, in einer offenen, offenen Fläche. Yes, and here is one picture. I, I think it's a great picture. How the, uh, how the sound of different frequencies or on the left side here, there is a sound with uh, the high frequency. And on the right side, there is a sound with lower fre frequency. And uh, maybe you know uh, that especially owls uh, produce uh, calls with lower frequency and, uh, around some one kilohertz. And typical some songbird can produce uh, the call around some uh, seven or eight kilohertz. And these sounds with the higher frequency can reflect uh, from the some from the solid surface or from or, or from the forest canopy, and then you will not hear uh, this sound for, with higher frequency uh, as well as uh, as the sound with lower frequency because these sounds also can penetrate and can spread it, can spread uh, much better in in forest canopy. Mhm. Also hier sieht man, wie sich die Wellen von den oder die Frequenzen von den verschiedenen ähm, ja, ähm, Lautstärken ähm, oder Liedern oder was auch immer man untersucht, ähm, verändert oder verhält. Also wenn man eine hohe Frequenz hat, ähm, wie das zum Beispiel bei Singvögeln der Fall ist, wird diese ähm, von einer Fläche ähm, abgestrahlt und man kann sie sehr schwierig entdecken, weil wenn man zum Beispiel in einem Wald ist ähm, und man einen Singvogel hört, ähm, ist es viel schwieriger eben diesen ähm, auch aufzunehmen, aber wenn auf der anderen Seite hat man zum Beispiel Eulengesänge, die eine äh, niedrigere Frequenz haben, das heißt sie können viel besser durch ähm, die Wald und auch durch die Waldoberfläche ähm, durchdringen und dadurch auch besser ähm, aufgenommen werden. So, and we can go um, especially to the all monitoring. <laughs> so, and yes, I can continue with that. There are, I think there are three general methods. One is the point count, then area monitoring and point transit. Uh, it's very similar uh, to monitoring methods of birds. Uh, so this, these methods are only um, adapted to these bioacoustics. So uh, with the point count, you will install the recorder on one side and here the recorder will monitor the whole area for, for, for many hours and days. In area monitoring, you can distribute uh, these recorders uh, around, uh, around the site and you can monitor uh, many quadrat 
meters or quadrat kilometers. And with the point transect, you can install the recorders uh, along the sum along the line, and you can very easily com compare uh, the different uh, different point transects from different environments. Mm -hmm. Also es, um, beim Eulen Monitoring speziell gibt es drei verschiedene Methoden, wie man die ähm, ihre Rufe aufnimmt und einerseits ist es die ähm, Punktzählung, also man, man wirklich nur an einzelnen Standorten ähm, alles rund um diesen Punkt ähm, aufnimmt. Man hat dann auch ähm, eine, sozusagen eine Bereichsüberwachung oder ein Bereichsmonitoring, wo man ähm, mehrere Quadratmeter oder Kilometer sogar ähm, überwachen kann. Und dann hat man eben einen Punkt Transekt oder auch eine Linienzählung, wo man ähm, Vergleichsstudien durchführen kann, also man die verschiedenen Punkte entlang einer Linie miteinander, Linie miteinander vergleichen kann und sozusagen ähm, dann die verschiedenen Rufe in verschiedenen ähm, Bereichen dieser Linie zu vergleichen. Yes, so the we can continue with the first method is point count. So one recorder on uh, at the one side. And here, yes, you can use or you can research uh, the species composition. This is, I think that uh, this is very often uh, used by NGOs or uh, from the State Nature Conservancy. But I think that uh, you can very easily record uh, the individuals or uh, individuals on the site. And you can, especially by owls and uh, by downy owls, you can uh, compare uh, the calls from different years and uh, on, the, on the picture. <laughs> There is the same mail uh, from different years, so it's, it's on the on the same side from uh, different years. So it is uh, uh, 2017, 2018, and it's the it's it's, uh, it's the same mail. <laughs> and uh, I because in one st study from uh, from Italy. Uh, there is mentioned that uh, you can uh, identify uh, the towny or males based on the shape of, uh, of, of the territorial call. And you can easily use uh, uh, in, uh, in the tune over on the side or like uh, tune over, it means uh, uh, exchange of males uh, during the years. Mm -hmm. Also ähm, bei der Punktezählung kann man natürlich einerseits die Artenzusammensetzung eine, ähm, ähm, eines Geländes ähm, studieren. Das heißt, welche verschiedenen Eulen oder Vogelarten gibt es dort. Aber ähm, der Flado sagt auch, dass man sehr gut ähm, einzelne individuelle Vögel ähm, erkennen kann, wie man eben auf, der, auf dem Foto links unten sieht. Das ist der Ruf von der gleichen Eule in verschiedenen Jahren. Um, und um, dadurch kann man wirklich einzelne Eulen identifizieren und sozusagen um, die verfolgen, ob sie ein Jahr hinter dem nächsten um, noch immer auf der um, Seite, auf, dem, auf der Location dort eben um, vorhanden sind oder ob sie vielleicht um, emigriert sind oder was auch immer mit ihnen passiert ist, kann man nicht wissen. Aber dadurch kann man um, vor allem für männliche Eulen um, feststellen, wie der Zu- und Abgang der Vögel dort in dem Bereich um, ist über die Jahre hinweg. Uh, and only for the comparison, there is uh, on the other picture you can see different males uh, on the same uh, side. So here is the one male and here is the second one. And you can see there is there is differences uh, in the in the shape of, of, of the call. Also hier auf der rechten Seite sind zwei verschiedene Männchen, zwei verschiedene Eulenmännchen und man kann wirklich sehen, dass der, ähm, deren Ruf sehr, sehr unterschiedlich ist und dass man dadurch eben genau ähm, individuelle Eulen identifizieren kann. 
Yes, and the second method is the area monitoring, how I said that uh, I think that this method you can use for uh, localization of territories in, in the area. Uh, what is uh, most important, uh, you must uh, select the position uh, of the recorder uh, in the area because you need to cover the whole selected area. So you, you need to know uh, uh, the, you need to know uh, the distance, uh, the distance. Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, because uh, there are uh, some tiny species of owls like pygmy owl. And also there are uh, some bigger species like tawny or, or eagle or and when if you would like to study uh, these tiny species uh, you must have a very dense network of these recorders uh, around the uh, around the selected site okay um also beim area monitoring or beim gebietsmonitoring um, kann man auch eben um, verschiedene Reviere sozusagen von den Eulen um, erforschen um, und auch deren, um, der, die Eigentümer dieser Reviere, also die, die Eule, die wirklich dieses Revier eigen hat, um, herausfinden. Aber da muss man eben sicher gehen, dass das ganze um, Gebiet, das ganze Revier von der Eule überwacht wird, weil es natürlich verschiedene großen, Größen von Gebieten gibt, je nachdem, welche Eulenart um, dieses Gebiet um, inne hat. Uh, only for example, here on the picture, this is a picture of my friend, also of ornithologist and uh, who use these bioacoustics. Uh, here, these symbols represent uh, the recorder, and this, poly red, this red polygon represent the territory of, I, I think, that the territory of Boreal O. So, and you can imagine how the dense network of recorders you need for, for the cover of, I don't for one hill, I think, because this, this is a peak uh, of, of, of the hill. Mm -hmm. Also here on the photo, sieht man um, eben die kleinen schwarzen, schwarzen Symbole sind, wo die Rekorder platziert sind und die roten Symbole, wo um, die Eulen dann um, auch gezählt wurden und man sieht einfach, dass man um nur ein, um ein Gebiet zu überwachen, man wirklich sehr, sehr viele um, Rekorder braucht, um sicher zu gehen, dass man eben um, alle Eulen aufzeichnen kann. Yes, here is the phone transact. Uh, how, I, how I said that it's a very universal method and very popular <laughs> because it's it is very easy to install uh, recorders in some distance between two recorders and you can use some old hiking trails and install the recorders uh, along along this trail uh, the typical line uh, uh, for for the research of forest owls in Europe. Uh, my friend sent, uh, my friend told me that uh, the, the, the best uh, distance between two recorders is here, 330 meters, <laughs> because based on experience, you can, uh, you can hear also tiny species like pygmy owl, and also the, uh, the, uh, the species of bigger size, like mm -hmm. Ural. Okay. Um, also bei der, bei, bei der Point Transect Methode um, kann man zum Beispiel sich Wanderwegen zunutze machen, um, die eben schon existieren, um die Rekorder entlang dieser Wege um, aufzustellen. Und um, der Flado sagt noch, dass ein Freund von ihm um, das irgendwie erforscht hat, dass um, ca. 330 Meter ähm, die perfekte Distanz zwischen den Rekordern ist, weil dadurch die meisten Eulenarten ähm, aufgenommen werden, also die kleineren und auch die größeren. Um, there, there is a question in the chat, maybe we can answer them right away, because um, it mm -hmm. fits right now. 
And, and Nick here asks um, what the minimum distance is to maintain between the recorders um, when you monitor diversity. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know that? Uh, diversity of all or of general birds? <laughs> does, it, does it depend, I guess, on the species, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I think that the research still depends uh, on the bird species or diversity. Uh, maybe you can use also this one, but uh, you will not cover the, sp the space between the two recorders, especially when you will record the small species like uh, like songbirds, because uh, in literature, I think that there is a mention that typically when uh, when you when you do some phone transacts, not with the bioacoustics, but uh, if, but in person, you can hear some bird species uh, to 100 meters meter from uh, from the person. So then I would uh, I would prepare much more densier uh, this uh, this line with uh, uh, with audio recorders. So each 100 meter, I would install the another recorder. Okay, also die Frage war, ähm, welche, was die minimale Distanz zwischen Rekordern ist, um ähm, die Artenzusammensetzung zu erforschen. Und der Blado sagt, dass das sehr ähm, darauf ankommt, ähm, was für welche Arten man erforschen will. Weil wenn es ein sehr kleiner Singvogel ähm, zum Beispiel in diesem Gebiet auch vorkommt und man sicher gehen will, dass man den auch aufnimmt, dann können die Rekorder zum Beispiel auch nur 100 Meter voneinander entfernt sein. Aber wenn es um größere Arten geht oder eben mit äh, tieferer Frequenz, dann reichen auch größere Distanzen, wie zum Beispiel diese 330 Meter oder sogar noch größer. Okay. okay. So, there is a picture about the installation in the field. You can try to find <laughs> this recorder. This one is here. <laughs> And one is here, and it's only for inspiration. <laughs> yes, and I think very important part is the processing of recordings. Uh, I think that you have um, two choice uh, in the processing and analyzing. Uh, one is the visual evaluation. It means that uh, you have a recording and you will use some program like Audacity. So you, you will load the whole recording to the software and then uh, you will produce the spectrogram. Spectrogram is like here. So you, so you see the call uh, with, uh, on, on this X line, there is a time. So this is a, uh, this 32 and 30. Three. This is these are seconds, and here on this epsilon line is epsilon. Uh, there is a frequency, so you will see this is a downy O, and the frequency is near or between the 900 kilohertz or 900 900 hertz. Sorry, <laughs> and and the visual evaluation means that uh, you will go to the whole recording and you will check these recordings and when you find some some call then you select this one and you will identify if what is the species and also when you have enough experience you can you can uh, identify if it is a male, female, and other information you can add to this recording. And the semi-automatic processing is that uh, the software will uh, select the calls fr from the recordings. So it's, uh, it's much easier, and I will say that uh, it's much more productive, but sometimes when you are not working with uh, recordings from uh, from from laboratory. When you have some 
uh, recordings uh, from the nature, there is a problem with this semi-automatic processing because uh, the background can be very noise in some situation, like when uh, the recorders were near the stream or we or there was some thunderstorm. So then you have a problem to select the calls of birds uh, from the recording. Okay. Also hier geht es jetzt eben um die Datenauswertung. Einerseits kann man das ähm, visuell machen, wie man rechts unten sieht. Man ähm, sieht, zu, sieht sozusagen das Spektrum von, ähm, von dem Ruf. Oben hat man auf der x-Achse hat man die Sekunden und auf der y-Achse hat man die Frequenz. Und mit Übung und eben einer Datenbank kann man das dann abgleichen und ähm, genau die Art ähm, identifizieren. Und dann gibt es aber auch eine semi-automatische ähm, Identifizierung oder Verarbeitung, was einfacher ist und schneller ist. Ähm, und das sieht man eben äh, rechts unten, wie das, da, mit, da geht es dann wirklich durch den Computer. Ähm, es kann aber oft zu Schwierigkeiten kommen, wenn die Rufe jetzt nicht aus dem Labor ähm, äh, ausgewertet werden, sondern wirklich Rufe aus der Natur ähm, aufgezeichnet wurden und hier natürlich ein paar Störungen auch mitwirken und das dann dazu führen kann, dass äh, die Rufe nicht so ähm, äh, effektiv vom Computer ausgewertet werden und man muss dann trotzdem noch selber ein bisschen ähm, nachbearbeiten. Okay. Okay, so, um, yes, with some short note to the software, yes, this is a spectrogram produced by Audacity, and you can see the typical recording uh, from the spring. These names are Latin names of uh, bird species, and yes, <laughs> you can identify many species from this one recording. So. It's very useful uh, by monitoring of bird diversity. Like, uh, what, what was the question <laughs> from the chat? It's, it's very useful for monitoring of bird di diversity, of especially diversity of songbirds. And uh, from my side, what is important uh, when you will choose some software is Uh, the software must working with big files. So big, this one recording uh, can be of one gigabyte, one gigabyte size or maybe more, uh, especially some bad recording, uh, especially when you record some one or two hours. This recording can be a very large, especially maybe maybe some gigabytes. <laughs> so, and this software must works uh, with these big files. Or also you can, uh, uh, you can select only some parts or, or, or you can split these recordings to few, uh, to few, uh, to few parts. So then you can also work much better uh, in some other software. Okay, also hier sieht man eben noch einmal, wie man das Ganze mit Audacity dann auch auswerten kann. Das ist dann eine manuelle Verarbeitung, ähm, wo man dann auch die verschiedenen Rufe splitten kann, also einzeln auswerten kann. Ähm, das sind oft sehr, sehr große Dateien, also das kann sehr lange dauern, bis das dann wirklich als ähm, ausgewertet ist. Um, Vlado, I would ask to, like to ask you a question right away because there is a question from um, Harald Renner. If there is an open source program that um, for automatical analysis of bird song recordings, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think uh, not program, but maybe some uh, uh, like how to say. Uh, Maybe when you uh, when you know uh, our program, uh, this is a environment for, especially for statistical analysis, and there are some uh, some extensions uh, also for working with bioacoustics recordings. But 
yes, I, I, I tried uh, this software or this uh, extension. And for me, it was not the best. It's maybe for, for some researchers in labs, but for me, it was very slow. <laughs> but, but it was only the first, uh, first impression. So maybe also the authors uh, uh, updated these extensions and now it's much better. But, but typical some software, open source software for automatic analysis, uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Harald writes that he knows R and um, it is complicated. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I can also and, and, and also for your, uh, for our German audience, uh, there is a simple manual how to work with Audacity. And there are also uh, notes in, uh, sorry, in, in, in Deutsch here on, on this website. Okay. So it's my friend's website and it's also in, in German. Perfect. So um, here gibt es noch eine Website um, mit einer Anleitung für Audacity und um, Bioakustik um, von einem Freund von Vlado und das gibt es auch in Deutsch, um, wenn man da mehr über, darüber erfahren will. Okay. So, and it, I think this is the last slide of this first part. So only some issues when you, when you record all. So the main issue is, is the same all. <laughs> when you have some recordings from, uh, from many recorders or uh, along the line or, uh, on, or, or on the one area. And also there is, uh, issue so how many territories of alls are uh, in the selected area <laughs> and also there is a when you are study the turn the turnover uh, on the side it's what if the call stability over time is is a question <laughs> okay also ein paar um, schwierigkeiten die es geben kann bei der forschung von eulen ist natürlich die Frage, ist das jetzt die gleiche Eule oder nicht? Ähm, also da muss man eben auf das Spektrogramm ganz ähm, gut Acht geben. Ähm, wie viele verschiedene ähm, Reviere, Gebiete gibt es hier und wie viele Eulen dabei? Ähm, und auch die Rufstabilität über der Zeit kann ähm, variieren, wodurch die Analyse etwas schwierig werden kann. Es okay. only, only one note, to, especially to the first problem. It is the same all. <laughs> So when you have uh, uh, more recorders uh, in the area, uh, especially in outer city, it's not a problem to load uh, some three or uh, four uh, recordings uh, to the program. And you can see if, uh, if the all was on, uh, on, uh, on only on one recording or it was uh, recorded uh, in, many uh, recordings and then you can compare the time uh, uh, time of calls and you can also uh, uh, try to identify this all based on uh, based on the shape of the uh, of the call okay um also wegen der ersten frage ob man heraus wenn man heraus ob es die gleiche eule ist oder nicht kann man auch die Aufnahmen von verschiedenen ähm, Rekordern vergleichen und dadurch dann ähm, eben die Eule ähm, auch identifizieren. Okay. okay. Yes, it's the end of the first part. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me quickly ask you two questions to okay. um, finish this part. And because we're a bit over time because of the technical delay, let's try to make the second part a bit um, quicker, but it's still important because we're going to introduce our new project. So that's really exciting. But let's first um, have a quick look at the questions. Mm -hmm. So Harald Renner also wants to know if it is um, possible to geolocate um, a, uh, a bird on behalf of the recording. So when you have a bird recorded, can you tell how far it is from mm -hmm. um, or where it is positioned from the recorder? Uh, it's, it's, it's not possible, I think. Uh, 
uh, it, uh, I must say that uh, this my, or my bioacoustic knowledge uh, are based uh, on the knowledge of a great uh, Czech ornithologist, Jan Savitsky. Uh, uh, he had, uh, I think, a great website about uh, his experience and also he uh, tried uh, he tried to to localize or to uh, he, he tried to work with the distance uh, from the recorders uh, so how far is the O uh, from the recorders but uh, it, it is it is not possible to say in in the field. It's maybe uh, maybe you, when you have some experience uh, in all monitoring, or not only in all monitoring, but uh, in different in different uh, bird species, uh, you know um, relatively uh, how far is the bird uh, when you when you hear when you heard the call. But uh, and and it is very similar uh, in recorders. But how I show you uh, in the presentation, uh, it depends on the geomorphology, uh, uh, also on the forest cover. So it it is very relatively how far is uh, is the bird from the recorder. Okay. But, but <laughs> Also, you can test uh, this one uh, in the field, so you can test uh, your recorders. Uh, so you put this recorder in the field, and you can go I don't know some uh, fifty meters uh, from the recorders, and you can play on your on your smartphone the recordings, and you can then analyze. Uh, how the how the sound uh, looks like uh, on the spectrogram. Okay. Um, also die Frage war, ob man eben einen Vogel lokalisieren kann durch die um, Aufnahmen und die kurze Antwort ist, dass es um, sehr schwierig ist und dass es noch nicht wirklich erforscht ist, ob es wie es möglich sein könnte. Es gibt verschiedene Methoden, um sich ein bisschen daran anzunähern, aber im Endeffekt weiß man noch nicht genau, um, wie wie das funktionieren soll. Yes, I would say that uh, we need much more research in this yeah, area, and and my also my friends, especially from the Czech Republic, are very skeptical to estimating distance of birds of, from the observer. So, okay. Um, a second question was interesting actually um if these recordings or recorders can be used to also monitor um like bigger mammals like loud mammals like for example um deers um or wolves if there is like um if you have experience or if there is research about that and even maybe if it's possible to uh, monitor poaching um of these animals mm -hmm. because of like for example gunshots yes Yes, it is possible, and uh, I, I think that the first using of this one, <laughs> this audio mod, uh, was in the jungle for monitoring of poaching. Uh, so not monitoring of poaching, but monitoring of uh, shootings uh, uh, in the jungle. In, I, I think that in South Africa. Uh, so, so you can use it, uh, especially especially when you have uh, more of these recorders. And so the monitoring of mammals, um, I think that I, I have no experience with monitoring of wolves <laughs> because I'm, I'm living in Western part of, of Slovakia and wolves are in central and especially in Eastern part. Uh, but I think that um, I think there is no complication with using by by wolves and also by deer, by deers so okay also die frage war ob man eben auch größere säugetiere um, wie zum beispiel um, hirsche oder wölfe damit erforschen kann 
oder sozusagen überhaupt Wilderei man auch damit ähm, aufnehmen kann? Und die Antwort ist ja, dass es schon gemacht worden ist und dass es definitiv möglich ist und auch schon benutzt wird in dem Sinne. Oh, ein yes. one note, one idea is uh, for using of bioacoustics in monitoring of uh, dormice. Uh, I, I don't know, do you know dormice? Uh, I don't know the German name. <laughs> This is a Gleis, Gleis. Sieben Schläfer, Gleis, Gleis. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. It's because, because these animals are very active uh, uh, during the night and they can produce a loud call. <laughs> okay, great. Um, one last question from uh, Manish Sanskiri. Um, mm -hmm. He is from India. And um, he wants to know how it is possible to study one specific species if you just target one species, for example, the forest owl, owlet. Um, but when there are many other species present, like how 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 to do that? I I, I don't see some issue with this. <laughs> So when you know some basic ecology of the species and you know uh, some mm, uh, some calls, so uh, how this species uh, is calling, so you can easily identify uh, on the spectrogram. Also, also in, in Europe we have uh, some I don't know some seven or eight uh, forest owls, and when you would like to research only one species is not problem but oh yes you are in in the nature and on the spectrogram you will probably have some uh, many other species but you can easily research the cause of, of the selected species but maybe you can modify the question <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valid question. So, um, simple answer that it is possible. You just have to know yeah. how. <laughs> okay. Great. Perfect. Um, that's it for now. So, let's get a quick overlook about our new project as well. Mm -hmm. okay. um, thank you, everybody, so much for your questions. Okay. Uh, you can see my mm -hmm. screenshot and presentation now. Yes, mm -hmm. just go to the first slide. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so yes, I will introduce you to our project. Uh, so this presentation was originally designed uh, for our partners in, in this project because I am here for Rival Institute uh, and our, uh, our task in, in this project is the research of all and the impact of forest management uh, on all species and now uh, and our my partner is the modern uh, society so yes you can see on the slide <laughs> our donor is the Bundesministerium of Austria uh, and yes it's I think that the English name or some English translation of this project is research and education about oils. But I am not very sure, but the name is Eulenspiegel project. Exactly. Also unser neues Projekt ist eben das Eulenspiegel Projekt um, zusammen mit dem Rebuild Institute und der European Wilderness Society und das ist eben vom Bundesministerium um, Österreich gesponsert oder ge um, finanziert. And um, in uh, English, in English, the name is Oils in Focus, actually. Um, there is no direct translation from Oil Spiegel to <laughs> English, so um, Oils in Focus was our decision. <laughs> and okay. yeah, um, es wird geforscht im Wildnisgebiet Dürrenstein um, und auch bei Göstling an der Ips und auch in der Salzburg, um, im Salzburger Land. Yes, <laughs> I, I forget <laughs> so where the project will be, will be realized. It's in Dürrenstein. Durenstein. Durenstein is a UNESCO site uh, with 
very old uh, beach forest or mi uh, and mixed forest. And also this project will be realized also in managed forest around Gosling under Ips. This is a small, I, I don't know, small town, small town <laughs> uh, near the Durenstein and also in Salzburg area. So, uh, okay. Yes, and this research part uh, is on me and on Ingrid. Maybe you know Ingrid Cole and the goal. So, what is the goal of this project? So, you can see on the slides. Uh, for me, it is especially uh, evaluating of the landscape management impact on forest populations. Uh, there is also the question uh, in my mind, uh, are natural and managed forests beneficial to all populations? And I would like to su uh, su suggest some improvements of forest management for the survival of all so maybe we will help uh, to forest managers, uh, forest managers, uh, how to help the, to the all and so to other bird species here in the area. Okay, also die Ziele des Projekts sind um, eben die Auswirkungen von Landschaftspflege und von der Bewirtschaftung von Wäldern auf die Eulenpopulationen. Um, es stellt sich die Frage, ob um, natürliche und bewirtschaftete Melder, Wälder um, eigentlich für die Eulenpopulationen von Vorteil sind, was besser ist, um, was schlechter ist. Und dadurch wollen, dann, um, wollen wir dann auch Vorschläge zur Verbesserung der Waldbewirtschaftung für das Überleben von den Eulen geben. Um, das ist um, das erste Mal, dass so eine Art von Forschung bei uns durchgeführt wird. Um, das heißt, es ist eigentlich eine Pilotstudie um, und man wird erst sehen, was eben dann die Resultate sind. Okay, so this is a general slide. I think that uh, each ornithologist know this one, what can influence or what can have an impact uh, on holes. So lost of all trees. Uh, different uh, forest management, like uh, different uh, density of trees in the area. So we can quickly go to this, to this slide. <laughs> <lacht> also, ähm, was einerseits die Eulen ähm, beeinflusst, ist der Verlust von alten Bäumen, ähm, die unterschiedliche Baumartenzusammensetzung in bewirtschafteten, bewirtschafteten natürlichen und Urwäldern, ähm, unterschiedliche Baumdichten und ähm, auch eine intensive Baumprotokollierung. Yes, and so these, these are all goals uh, for this project. Uh, so we will uh, study the abundance of all species in different sites, uh, diversity and species compositions. Uh, I would like uh, to study also the turnover of males of uh, the towny owl uh, uh, for two years. And so the second part is, I, I don't know if, it, it, it is a road uh, in the project, but I would like also to study the hooting parameters. Okay. Um, was wir erforschen werden, ist einerseits die Verbreitung der Eulenarten um, in den Wäldern, die Diversität und die Artenzusammensetzung der Eulen, um, der Zu- und der Abgang der Männchen um, in dem Gebiet in, in diesen zwei Jahren. Und auf Lado wird auch gern noch eben die Ruf oder die Hooting Parameter sozusagen ähm, erforschen. Yes, and we will study also the environmental parameters. So we would like to analyze uh, the relationship between holes and the environment. So, and this is what we would like to study. It's some parameters of, of the forest. Uh, on the site, like fragmentation and forest gain and loss. And in the field, we would like a quick evaluate uh, the relative abundance of tree species. And if there is a presence or absence of trees with holes. 
Okay, also neben den Eulen wird auch noch ähm, Umweltparameter studiert, einerseits ähm, eben die Bedeckung mit, dem, mit GIS, ähm, auch eben ähm, die Fragmentierung der Umwelt, Wird, gibt es einen Waldrückgang ähm, oder einen Waldgewinn ähm, ähm, und wie ist die Geländegeomorphologie aufgebaut, um all das auch mit den Eulenpopulationen in Verbindung ähm, zu bringen. Yes, and yes, we can go to the method. So now, after the first part, in, you know the basic method of the oil monitoring <laughs> is the we will use a point transect method with the four recorders per one kilometer line. Uh, we would like uh, to do this uh, uh, this research on. 15 lines in uh, buildings in Durenstein, 15 lines in managed forest uh, near the buildings gebiet area, and few lines in Salzburg area. Okay. Um, also, jetzt wissen wir natürlich schon, wie die Bioakustik funktioniert, und das werden wir dann auch um, dort anwenden. Ähm, wir werden jeweils vier ähm, Rekorder in ein Kilometer ähm, Linientransekten installieren. Ähm, dabei ähm, werden wir 15 Linientransekte im Wildnisgebiet Dürnstein, 15 in den bewirtschafteten Wäldern und ein paar in das halt in Salzburg ähm, Land ähm, äh, installieren und dann ähm, die Auswer Aufnahmen von dort auswerten. Yes, and this uh, research uh, Will be realized uh, in spring. I, I hope that <laughs> in, in the spring and also during the autumn. So you know now the situation is difficult, <laughs> but but I hope that during the spring we will, real, we will realize a big part of this project. Okay, also im Frühling und im Herbst sind die Forschungen geplant. Es ist zurzeit noch ein bisschen schwierig, wie wir alle wissen. Aber wir hoffen, dass das alles so gut wie möglich über die Bühne läuft. Jetzt im Frühling und dann im Herbst sollte es eh kein Problem mehr sein. Yes. Uh, this slide is about the, the research of turnover. So how I show you uh, in the first part. So now you also know what is the turnover, uh, how to research uh, or uh, how to identify uh, some males. So Now it's uh, it's much clearer <laughs> for you. <laughs> genau, also wie wir vorher ja schon gesehen haben, kann man eben den Zu- und Abgang von Männchen äh, mit der Bioakustik studieren, indem man eben in verschiedenen Jahren ähm, die ähm, Rufe vergleicht und zu sehen und sieht, ob eben die gleichen oder verschiedene Männchen im Gebiet sind. Und genau das werden wir auch in diesem Projekt ähm, durchführen. Yes, only short, uh, when we will find in, in the recordings some good quality uh, calls of uh, tiny owls, then we will use uh, these calls uh, in analysis uh, for the turnover research. Um, genau, also... Um wir werden dann eben genau diese Rufe, ähm, die von den Tiny Owls ähm, aufgenommen werden, ähm, analysieren und dann ähm, eben genau ähm, das auswerten, was wir vorhaben, also ob bewirtschaftete oder natürliche Wälder einen Einfluss auf sie haben. Mhm. Ah, yes, this is only schematic <laughs> graph or schematic image. So, first is the O, then we will record these O calls. Here we will process these recordings to the spectrogram and maybe we will uh, take some uh, measurements, <laughs> uh, so some measures uh, of this, uh, this food. Ja, also hier ist noch eine schematische Zusammenfassung vom Prozess. Ähm, die Eule ruft, der Ruf wird aufgezeichnet, ähm, der Ruf wird ähm, im Spektrogramm analysiert und dann kann man auch wirklich noch genau die Daten sammeln, wie dieser Ruf aufgebaut ist und das dann in die Datenbank hinzufügen. Yes, and this is some, some slide to the analysis. Uh, we will like first uh, compare 
the uh, all population of all populations uh, in uh, buildings gave it Durenstein, where are primaveral forests, and uh, with, uh, with the Manash, with the managed forest, and also with the Salzburg area. And uh, yes, and we would like to find some correlations uh, between population and environmental parameters. Mm -hmm. Also, bei der Analyse geht es dann darum, um gewisse um, Korrelationen uh, zu identifizieren, wenn sie bestehen zwischen um, den allen Populationen, zwischen den Aufzeichnungen, die wir gemacht haben und den Umweltparametern, die wir eben auch um, aufzeichnen. Und dadurch kann man dann eben feststellen, um, welchen, ob ein Einfluss besteht und wenn ja, welch, welcher Einfluss. Yes, and there are a few maps or orthopoto maps of this area. So the green line, this is the border of the Vilnius Gebiet Durenstein. And uh, the blue lines are the point transects. So these, these transects are only planned. So, so we now we don't realize or we don't start with realizing. <laughs> Okay, also hier ist, sieht man das Wildnisgebiet Dürrenstein und die geplanten ähm, Linien, ähm, die ähm, durch die ähm, Aufnahmen eben erforscht werden, werden sollen. Yes, and this is a, a 3D model of, of this area. So you can see that the lines are placed uh, not only uh, in the valley, uh, but also in vertical, vertical type and also on, on, on the ridge. So, so they will be placed uh, in different way uh, in this area. Okay, also das in dem 3D-Modell sieht man auch ganz gut, dass um, diese Linien eben auf verschiedenen, um, in verschiedenen Bereichen platziert werden, um, teilweise um, auf der Bergkette, aber auch im Tal oder auf den Berghängen um wirklich alle möglichen ähm, Bereiche abzudecken. Und man kann sich gut vorstellen, dass diese teilweise natürlich auch ähm, schwer zu erreichen sind. I think it is the last slide. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you for your attention. So. Okay. Thank you, Vlado. Um, I'm going to add that um, this was, of course, the research part of the project. Um, but we have also planned some educational activities in the project to get the word out into the public and also to the younger generation to, um, yeah, to just teach them a little bit the importance of OS and how um, this method works um, in the field and that this method is actually really, um, really, really useful and that, um, yeah, that forest on the one side and OS owls on the other side are super important to be researched and to be protected as well. And yes, on that, exactly. in that, at that point, I would also like to um, yeah, mention again that the project, the Orange Spiegel project, but also the project um, Biodiversität, um, Multiperspektivische Blickwinkel auf die Biodiversität im Wald, they're both um, funded by the um, Austrian Ministry, um, specifically by the Bundesministerium für Landwirtschaft, Regionen und Tourismus. Um, Thomas Mann, um, who is a very close partner in this, um, is actually also present today in the webinar. So thank you for uh, for being here, Thomas. Um, and and yeah, thank you so much, Vlad, for your insights into the whole topic. And we're looking forward to a successful project. Yes, <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Great. Um, I see there is a, another question in mm -hmm. the chat. Let's see. Um, Nikhil says, it would be great if you could give me more details on the recorder microphones you have been using and if they can be bought online. No problem, but uh, especially when we are talking about this <laughs> one, you can, you can try to find uh, the website is, I think it's open acoustic devices, or you can try to find uh, audio mod uh, on the Google. Okay, I will type that in the chat. <laughs> okay. 
Um, and um, we have also a comment from, um, I'm sorry if I, I say your name wrong, but I will try. Um, Siddharth, um, he says, thank you so much for the informative talk. And if you would be willing to share your email address um, or contact sure. um, address, so if maybe people have more questions or want to reach out. Of course, no problem. So if, if you want to do it right away in the chat, you can do that so that all participants know how mm -hmm. to you, that would be great. And if any other questions, um, if you have any other questions, anybody, please feel free. Falls ihr noch weitere Fragen habt, um, gerne. Wir sind zwar schon über der Zeit. Ihr dürft auch gerne euch verabschieden. Und um, ja, ich wünsche euch noch einen schönen Tag, sollte das der Fall sein. Aber falls ihr noch kurz da bleiben wollt, um, seid ihr auch hat sich dazu eingetragen, ähm, eingeladen, noch mehr Fragen zu stellen. Okay. All right. Um. Was ist denn, uh, what is the maximal um, distance, um, wait, sorry. Okay, um, so what is the maximal distance a recorder can um, detect um, sounds? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think that it's, uh, it's like our, our, our ears. <laughs> so what do you can hear, so then this, uh, Tiny recorder can also hear all and can record. And uh, yes, when we are talking about this recorder or this type of recorder, uh, you can go to the website. Uh, I can maybe, yes, I will share the website uh, about these audio mode recorders in the chat. Maybe that org. You must try uh, via Google. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, I I'm not sure if I'm not wrong, but yes, to the distance uh, you can uh, you must uh, download uh, an app uh, for your uh, operational system uh, from the website, and then um, when you set up this rec this recorder, you can choose. Uh, also uh, the, the the sensitivity uh, of recording and typically i use the medium but you can you can change okay. you can change it <laughs> would you have uh, some kind of recording on your computer that you could share with us i don't know if that would work but i think it would be really cool <laughs> if you do, I don't know. It's just the came uh, idea came to my mind now. So, so please repeat. <laughs> if it is, it is. <laughs> you have a recording that you could share with us, so we have an idea um, of how how it is. Aha! Uh, how how it looks like in Audacity, or either how it looks like or how how it um, sounds like, whatever you you have. Aha! Okay, I have here maybe i will share the screen ah. you can see this one i can i still see the presentation yeah ah, okay so okay i must change it <laughs> then new yes new share is this one is that now you should oh cool ah this this not the one <laughs> Uh, one moment, please. And let's move oh, uh, this one. Yes, okay. This. Uh, and, ah. You can see? Mm -hmm. I, I see the, the program and the spectrogram, yeah. Yes, and the spectrogram with some wave, yes. Or not. Uh, okay, yes, you 
this is what I share. Yes, you can see uh, the Audacity program, and here is the spectrogram. Uh, I can zoom. One moment, please. <laughs> yes, this is a recording from yeah. uh, some two years ago. Uh, and this is a tiny O. o. I can select uh, some part of the call. I will zoom it. And yes, I can also try to select. Yes, and you can, uh, yes, I can play the sound. It's not a problem, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you will hear <laughs> this one Let's because now I, I use a uh, uh, earpiece. <laughs> so, right, so. right, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a problem for you to download this program also for Linux systems or for Windows, and you can uh, load uh, I think buff file, so that uh, that w a v or, or some mp3 music, and also you can play the music in uh, in this program, or I or when you would like um, to work with some spectrogram, uh, you can you can use your smartphone and you can record some bird song, or you can download some mp3 file uh, from from some database like Xenocanto. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, it's great. no problem. And so yes, I, I would <laughs> I, I would play this sound, but you will not I, I think that you will not hear this. <laughs> That's all right. It's interesting to see how how it is like I'm I'm also recording like podcasts and things, and there mm -hmm. you also use these kind of um, systems. But of course, um, it doesn't. Yeah, maybe it looks uh, complicated, but uh, it's yeah. it's very simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. So, so here uh, on the left side there is a frequency, uh, and here is the time. So this is a 15 seconds, 16 seconds, and mm -hmm. you can still zoom this one and here you can see uh, the length of yes this is the length of this selection so it's it's good when you would like to do some research you can measure this uh, one some parts of the hooping or some part of the bird songs and so you can then analyze this okay this measurement. And then, yeah, so what you have to kind of measure the, the songs, right? And then, mm -hmm. because then you have to make this linear analysis, like um, correlation analysis. Yeah, yes, yes. So you need okay. some specific numbers for everything. And, and of course, uh, you can use some commercial program like uh, from Cornell Lab, it is Raven Pro. And uh, I, I don't know how it's how uh, it is in this commercial program, but there are also many, uh, many measures what you can do. Mm -hmm. But but in Audacity, you can measure especially uh, the length of time. <laughs> but uh, yes, I can show you also, you can analyze here, here is maybe the plot spectrum, and this is the peak frequency, or I would say this is the uh, main frequency of this selection is mm -hmm. you can see he, here uh, this is a peak it's about uh, 900 hertz so okay. sometimes uh, this measure is used in some analysis of uh, frequencies also you can find some information about this in some research studies okay cool <laughs> Well, thank you for for this insight as well, and and yeah, um, is there? Do you have now already planned when you can start the field research now in spring? 
Yes, this is the <laughs> best question. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go there uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, I am from Slovakia and the research is in Austria. I am in the border zone. I am only some two kilometers from, from the border with Austria, but uh, now I must be in quarantine when I would go to Austria and especially when I would go back to my country. <laughs> but I think uh, when it will be possible, when we will have recorders and uh, all tools uh, in uh, Rivald Institute, then I would like to go there. Yes, quarantine or not quarantine, I <laughs> must go there and I would like to do the field research, especially some part of this research. And why does it have to be in spring or could it also be in summer or does it have to do with the... Uh, I, generally the spring is the best time because the holes are most active. Uh, especially the males are very active uh, with the territorial call, so you can very easily identify the number of territories. But still, it, it depends uh, on the year. So, some years are, are the males very active, and some, some years, especially when, the, uh, when there is a very few prey for the owls, uh, then owls can be much less active or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or totally silent. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes uh, autumn is sometimes better time, uh, like this, uh, in in, co in comparison to the spring in the same year. But it, it's it's hard to say. The, I think the best we will see maybe the spring will be the best time, and uh, we will have no problem to uh, to record holes in the area. But maybe holes will be silent during the time and uh, during the spring time and we, we must go there during this during the autumn <laughs> okay i see yeah of course you can never predict how, yeah how it's, it's, it's nature so it's not laboratory work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that makes it also exciting <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, we hope too that you are soon be um, will be able to come come here and also come to visit, of course. Um, and I I wouldn't mind to to join you for a couple of field days. Um, it's always nice to be in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with this. <laughs> now, now that we already have these little things um, here um, as well, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, Vlado, um, for, for your talk, for your presentation. Yeah. You are welcome. I'm very happy that I, will, that I will present our presentation and our project uh, you know, to the audience. So I'm very happy. Yeah, me too. And we've got some very interesting questions as well. So that's really good. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Well, then um, we will see each other soon, I hope, or speak to each other soon. And um, yeah, uh, let's keep yes. it. Yes, I hope. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everybody who is still here. Thanks for, for joining in and have a rest, um, nice rest of the day. <laughs> okay, thank you very Bye, much. Everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>